JJ McCarthy to the Seattle Seahawks at number 16. Is it likely or is it not? It's hard to tell. But I know that the Seahawks are continuing to talk about quarterbacks, bring in quarterbacks for top 30 visits, and in general, quarterbacks are a big topic in this building. I've mentioned it on many videos before. I had my video recently this week about Michael Penix Jr. potentially to the Seahawks. And I mentioned John Schneider's comments that were very important at the combine. He comes from the Green Bay Packers and he is used to drafting quarterbacks. He says he is not necessarily proud of the fact that the Seahawks have drafted two quarterbacks in his tenureship. It was Alex Magoo and Russell Wilson. That's it. For a guy coming from Green Bay, for a guy that loves the idea of continuing to draft quarterbacks, I think it was more of a Pete Carroll thing that they weren't drafting quarterbacks. Because as we have figured out, Pete Carroll had more say in this roster than John Schneider potentially, and especially in the draft. And at the end of the season, every day, Pete Carroll said things like, we were good because of our leadership at the quarterback position and different things like that. And John Schneider's answers to his Gino, the quarterback of 2024, is he is right now. So they obviously have two different theories on it. And the Seahawks, I feel like, are in an interesting position to take a quarterback if available. But they're also in an interesting position to cause some smoke screens, to cause teams to think they're interested in Michael Penix Jr., J.J. McCarthy, and Bo Nix. And those are guys that have visited with the Seahawks, spoken to the Seahawks, and been a, a topic of discussion in the Seahawks world. So is J.J. McCarthy a real option? Well, some people believe he is, and some people think there's no shot. And it depends where you value him. Those that think he's an option think he is undervalued and he's going to drop somewhere closer to 16 or we might have to move up a spot or two to go grab him and they think the upside is really big but then there's those who don't think we'll get him for multiple reasons one people don't think he's that great of a quarterback he's a college quarterback who had a average or above average college career but not like a heisman level type of quarterback he had a great team career but not necessarily, you know, the likes of a Baker Mayfield or Kyler Murray or Lamar Jackson or Vince Young or, you know, he, he wasn't the, he wasn't even as big of a name, obviously, as the Michael Penix Juniors of the world, right? Uh, obviously, you see those top three quarterbacks are going to go. Caleb Williams won a Heisman, Jaden McDaniels won a Heisman, and you have Drake May, who is a high level player, and you had Michael Penix Jr., who had Heisman, uh, you know, aspirations and got invited to the Heisman show. JJ McCarthy was more just the good quarterback, almost like the Alabama standard, right? The AJ McCarrens and the, those type of guys. The good quarterback on the good team. Now, those guys can either work out, obviously, like any other quarterback, they can work out well or not in the NFL. But he's been just kind of this polarizing guy where it just it's hard to tell if he is the next level type of dude or not now with the seahawks we can't forget there is a lot of connections to the seahawks in michigan especially mike mcdonald mike mcdonald started working for john harbaugh went to jim harbaugh in michigan and then back to the ravens with john harbaugh so what type of team does that mean this head coach is going to want to build He's going to want to build the hard-nosed defense, good run game, balanced, you know, balanced everywhere. It doesn't necessarily mean it has to be a superstar quarterback. You want a quarterback that if you look at the Jim Harbaugh, the Michigan, the Ravens, forget that they have Lamar Jackson right now too at the Ravens. That's just, you know, by happenstance, they got lucky and got him 31, the 30th pick in the draft. They always build championship teams off of focusing on the quarterback is a good enough quarterback. And then you have dynamic run games everywhere, which Lamar Jackson does do. Um, and you have a balanced, really good defense. So, of course, Mike McDonald probably has some interest in a guy like J.J. McCarthy. But it also, they also have Geno Smith, who could be that great baseline quarterback to have this year, maybe even the next year. And Sam Howell is a guy that they maybe think that they can do that with as well. So are they really that interested in J.J. McCarthy or Michael Penix Jr. or Bo Nix? I can't tell. It, I can't tell if it's that or they're trying to have a smoke screen and say, oh, yeah, we want these guys. And then if somehow they fall there, other teams are coming up with, you know what? Take our, take our first round pick next year. Take two second rounds this year and 
let, let's take that pick. And the Seahawks say, oh, yeah, sure. Sounds good. That's good. We joked around about being interested in a quarterback. So I, I'm not, it's hard to tell. Now, we're going to go down the list. You have, let's say, in those top three spots, it's three quarterbacks potentially going to go, right? Chicago's going to take Caleb Williams. I think Washington's going to take Drake May and or or Jaden McDaniel, sorry. And then New England might take somebody like Drake May, potentially. Arizona, I'm going to guess, is like Marvin Harrison. The Chargers don't need a quarterback. Then you have the Giants, who will very likely be interested in, in a quarterback. Now, we don't know if they really believe in Daniel Jones or not, but that's a team there that might be interested. And you have Tennessee. I think they're going to stick it out one more year. Atlanta's not taking anybody. Chicago's not. The Jets, I don't think so with Aaron Rodgers there. He doesn't want to deal with the backup. But then you have at 11, Minnesota, who could be very interested, especially in those other guys left, like J.J. McCarthy. Uh, he seems like a great fit there, by the way. Michael Penix, Bo Nix, all these different guys. Denver. Obviously, a high possibility they're interested. L.A. in New Orleans. L.A. I mean, it's not L.A. Sorry, Las Vegas. They are obviously going to be interested. New Orleans. I'm not sure. Uh, I don't know if how how serious they are about Derek Carr. Indianapolis probably not. And then Seattle's right there. So, could you trade up to the tenth pick, where New York is, or even the ninth where Chicago is, if you really want a quarterback? Definitely. And if you fall there. If, the, if this falls down where nobody's taking the, one of those quarterbacks at 16, you might have a team like Minnesota now who has the 23rd pick say, let's trade back up. And I know we didn't take him at 11, but we want him now, you know, or, or a team, whoever it is that's looking for a backup quarterback even early. The, the hard thing is, which it shows how valuable a quarterback is in this league. Once you get to 17 and down, a lot of those teams don't need quarterbacks anymore. You're looking at guys like Jacksonville, Cincinnati, Rams, Pittsburgh, Miami, Philadelphia, Minnesota, via trade, Dallas, Green Bay, Tampa. It shows that having a quarterback puts you lower in the draft. So <laughs> a lot of the teams up high need a quarterback. And that's why Seattle's kind of stuck there dead in the middle, kind of with those other teams like New Orleans, Indianapolis, Seattle, Jacksonville. Quarterback's fine. Maybe not fine enough right now. Some of them are younger. Some of them had injuries. And then some we've just moved off like the, like, you know, for Denver and LA or sorry, Las Vegas, I'll say LA. So it's going to be really odd to see what happens. Cause I don't know the JJ McCarthy stuff feels real, but will he be gone at 16 or are we trying to trade up for somebody like that? Or Michael Penix or Bo Nix? I, I don't, I feel like those guys will drop a little further. At least Penix and Bo Nix, I feel like will be more in that Seattle range at 16, unless every team just goes wild and starts drafting quarterbacks. And maybe the Seahawks are interested in a quarterback that they're just not talking about. And the early stuff is a smokescreen. You never know if they're looking for Michael Pratt later, Spencer Rattler later, um, whoever it may be. But the J.J. McCarthy stuff could be real. He's 21 years old compared to Rattler who's like 23. Michael Penix is 24 years old. J.J. McCarthy is 21. He doesn't turn 22 until end of next season in January. So he is a young guy and put up decent stats and obviously won a national championship in Michigan. He threw for 2,700 yards, uh, five picks with 22 touchdowns uh, two years ago. 2023 at 72% completion percentage, essentially 3,000 yards. It was 2,991, but 3,000 yards, 22 touchdowns and four picks. Now, when you look at some games like the championship game, it shows how good Michigan was. He was 10 for 18, 140 yards, no touchdowns, no picks. They won 34 to 13 against my Washington Huskies, which is the only reason, honestly, I feel like a lot of Seahawks fans hate the Bo Nix because he's from Oregon and, and JJ McCarthy idea because he was on Michigan who beat Washington, but 10 for 18, it, you didn't, nothing popped off the screen, right? When in that national championship game, other than I would say like a good teammate and composure now against Alabama, a little more popped off when I was watching that game with JJ McCarthy, 17 for 27, 222, 2,221 yards, three touchdowns, no picks. That's pretty freaking good against Alabama winning in overtime in a semifinal to go to the national championship. You deserve a big pat on the back and a lot of credit. But once again, why I find it interesting is, and why I think a lot of people are hesitant is sometimes he has some intangibles that pop off the screen. Like I said, leadership and good guy, but there's some numbers in some games you watch and you're like, ah, is there anything special here? Let's go through the last six games, right? 
including the Washington game. They played Maryland. They won by seven. He was 12 for 23 with 141 yards. No touchdowns and a pick. They beat uh, Ohio State by six. He was 16 for 20, 148, one touchdown, no picks. They beat Iowa 26 nothing in the Big Ten Championship. He was 22 for 30, no touchdowns, no picks. Alabama was the big game, 221, three touchdowns, no picks, but then 140, zero touchdowns, zero picks against Washington. So in those final five games on the run to the national championship, he had four touchdowns and a pick. If you take away the Alabama game, which I'm I'm not going to discredit him, I'm just saying hypothetically, four out of his last five games had one touchdown, one pick. Four, four out of the last five games was one touchdown and one pick and never over 150 yards passing. And that's where the hesitation comes. Is his upside as good as some people believe? Or was he a, you know, was he just a, what do they call them? The, um, you know, was he just like the quarterback that's uh, just following the motions because the team is good. He's just a place mark quarterback and just don't mess up. You know, don't, don't do anything stupid because if you do something stupid, we might lose. But if you just play this game safely, we're going to win the game. Now, some people really want him there. Let's talk about Brock Heward. He said he would do anything. Brock Heward of uh, Seattle Sports Radio said he'd do anything to bring J.J. McCarthy to Seattle. He said, I feel more conviction about this than I have in past years. And there are some concerns of J.J. It's real. I'm not going to be blind to that. But my conviction is this, if that if John Schneider, Mike McDonald, and if Mike McDonald is embedded within Michigan for a year and says to John, we've got to go get him, I don't care, then they're going to. Uh, he said, this is a guy I want to build the program around. He's a leader. He's a winner. He's tough. He's South Chicago. He's all these things. So it, I think everyone's kind of understanding that. Is there limitations? Absolutely. Is there some things that don't make it that intriguing? Absolutely. But is, is there some signs that he he's a dog? Yes. That he can win big games? Absolutely. Like he says, from South Chicago, won big games, won in Michigan, uh, didn't mess up during these games. All those games I told you were four out of the five games, he had one touchdown, one pick. I'll tell you something. He didn't mess up. But not screamed off as amazing talent, but didn't mess up. He continued, Brock Howard, uh, Brock Howard said, is it trading DK Metcalf? Is it trading next year's first? I would sure love this year's first. I really would, but I'd love to add Troy. I can't say it. Fat to new in some top difference makers that are in the top 50 of this draft. But I don't want, I don't walk away from this year's draft without doing and exhausting every opportunity to go get JJ McCarthy. Sometimes when I hear these things too, I assume there is some, you know, meaning behind it, or there's some reasoning behind people talking about this. And obviously, like I said, there are smoke screens that teams say things just to make other teams believe it. And even radio guys that are deeply embedded with the team, they get them to say some stuff and make it sound like we're that interested. So some teams might trade that pick for us. They, they might give us an, another pick and then we can just move back a couple spots. They can take the quarterback. We're fine. So I'm not sure what the real answer is. I'm going to say, if they feel convicted enough to go draft J.J. McCarthy at that 16th pick or even have to trade up, I'm going to believe in it because I believe John Schneider knows what he's doing. I believe Mike McDonald knows what he's doing. But I wouldn't understand why they traded for Sam Howell. And I don't understand, you know, why... Why right now? Why this year? That means they would have to love J.J. McCarthy. I'm not sure what the real feeling is. All I know is, like I said, if they feel inclined to draft J.J. or even somebody like Michael Penix or Bo Nix, I'm going to believe in it. I still just won't understand the Sam Howell trade. My main, main guess right now is it's a smokescreen. So somebody will have to trade with them to get closer to that pick. The only problem with that smokescreen would be if these quarterbacks are off the board by 16, Seahawks probably get nothing for that pick and they're just going to be drafting whatever they were going to take anyways. So we'll see. The only way we'll know if they're going to really take this guy is if you're watching on draft day and you see the Seahawks have traded up to pick 10, assume it's a quarterback. If not, I'm guessing we're just going to be waiting it out, probably take a good defensive talent at that 16th pick. Let me know what you think we're going to do. Would you be interested in JJ McCarthy to the Seahawks? We'll find out. I love y'all and we'll be back next time. Like and subscribe. Peace.